We are another connection. How many of you are watching right now? Okay. So I'm going to get into this transmission and I felt inspirited to invite anyone who wanted to partake in this by putting a post on Facebook by saying that if I get a hundred comments I might be persuaded to do a live YouTube stream tonight at 10 o'clock and what was very interesting is people replied very very quickly so I'm happy that you're all here so we need to communicate about a few things and this is very very important so as you guys know there is a big solar eclipse that is on its way to our world and it's very very important that we connect with the energies accordingly now one of the things that I wanted to express is that with this particular It's important that we align ourselves with the energies that are being made available. And there are some very interesting differences of opinion of which I won't involve myself in. I can only speak from an experiential place of gnosis and knowingness. The gnosis and the knowingness is a direct connection to parts of myself that are not inside of my brain, not inside of my body. Those parts of myself I trust very, very much. And I have worked to attain that connection through many, many different painful events as well as being in a void sometimes for years, learning how to think independently without having the disturbances that have been thrust upon most of us, including myself. So I want to acknowledge all of my students. I love you guys very, very much. And I want to thank you for being part of the studentship program because you guys have a very important role to play in the 144,000 so much that I'm wanting to say about that, but I can't because the audience has not grown to a point where I can disseminate that information without confusing people. But the inner circle of my students, they get it. And even them, I can't tell a lot of what I'd like to say or what I'm destined to say until the allotment of time has passed. And I can share those things because the consciousness of the audience has to grow together in order for me to really espouse some of the things that the hierarchies would like for me to share. All right. 
So, I want you guys to look at something. This is a very good friend of mine, and I think you all know who she is. I'm not going to say your name. I'm going to see if you all can dial in. I'm going to look at some of the comments and see who knows who this is. Go ahead. I see you in Bermuda, Darlene. How are you? I see you, Navia. How are you, Navia? And then I see you, Rael. Greetings. It's good to see you. No, this is not Lord Shiva. Come on, guys. No, this is not Durga. It is not Lakshmi. Come on, guys. It's Ah, yes, Angel Rose. You got it. This is the divine Kuan Yin. I'll show it to you again. Okay. So, Kuan Yin, very, very good friend of mine. And we've worked together for different lifetimes. And Kuan Yin is very powerful. Now, the statue that you just saw is called Kuan Yin with a thousand heads. Thousand heads. Think about that for a minute. Why would a deity be portrayed with a thousand heads? There are statues of myself that have a thousand arms or a thousand heads as well. When you look at Lord Ganesha and you look him up, you will see that he has a thousand heads in some of them. Not a thousand literally, but it's a depiction of a row of heads. How many of you can really understand what that's about? Well, one of the things that I would tell you is that the gods are vast and the gods have intelligence that would make the world's supercomputer look like an Etch-a-Sketch. They can quantumly configure things that are staggering and it's amazing. So the reason that the gods are depicted in this way, like this, okay? Love you, Kuan Yin. Kissing one of her heads, one of her many heads in this statue. It's because it speaks to the abilities, the many, many different abilities that they have. They have access to intelligence that far supersedes the worlds that they exist on. And someone asked me, they said, Baba Shri, why is it that when you look at the statues of the Buddha or the paintings of Lakshmi, that they all look the same way? It's a really good reason for that. That's another question that I will give you guys to solve before the seminar to see if you guys are able to come up with the answer to that. And my students are not forbidden Oh, you guys are forbidden to answer that question because it's not fair to the regular people who are, as you can see, see this shirt right here? It's a missing button. It's one of my favorite shirts, but it's a shirt from one of the old summers, and I just refuse to get rid of it because I like the color of peach, and I haven't replaced it yet. So, the eclipse is coming up, and this is the Lion's Gate portal. 8, 8, 20, 17, 7 plus 1 or 1 plus 7 equals 8. I met with my local Galacticans today and some of my students were present. So good to see you guys. We had a great conversation and we spoke a little bit about the relativity and the purpose of why this and what happens, what the true meaning of the solar eclipse is. Well, one of the things is that when the eclipse happens, which I believe is scheduled on a Monday, is that the sun will be eclipsed by the moon. And there are many, many different schools of thoughts. And one of the things that I would say that it is important for you, now there are, I've heard different things. I've heard people saying all kinds of things. The one thing that I am going to ask 
all of my students, all of my listeners, my initiates, all of the adepts that are in the Balder Kronos program is to execute one ritual. And this ritual is for you to, and I'm saying this publicly, and this goes for anyone that has a super cotton dough. If you have the creator cotton dough, I want you to take that cotton dough the night before the actual eclipse, which will be on Sunday night at the stroke of midnight, whatever time zone you are in. I want you to hold that cotton dough in your hand. Now listen, if you don't have the creator cotton dough, that's fine. Use one of the super cotton dells. We'll get into the power of it later. If you don't have any of those, you can use a regular bodega candle. Not cotton dough, bodega candle. Dollar ninety nine, $2.17 with tax. So you want to take this candle, hold it in both of your hands. And at the stroke of midnight, you're going to light it. What's going to happen after you light that candle at the stroke of midnight is that you're going to invoke or evoke the intelligence of Archangel Gadriel. And I'm going to ask everyone who has a cosmic beacon to make sure that you wear it while you are invoking or evoking the presence of that during the stroke of midnight. I want you to leave your super cotton down or your bodega candle lit for the entire cycle of the next day upon your altar. If you're afraid of your altar catching fire, it's very simple. You can get a bowl of water. You could fill it up halfway and you could place the cotton dough or the candle inside of the bowl of water. It will not catch fire. Don't be concerned with that. Leave it lit upon your altar. Make sure that everything on your altar, there's nothing that could catch a blaze or a fire there. And just take care of that. And when the eclipse occurs, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Take out your cell phone. Oh, the color. Yes, the color of the candle has to be white if you're using a regular bodega candle. If you are using any of the Galacticus Super Cottondales, you can use either one of them because they are programmed in a certain way. It doesn't matter. Okay. If you're traveling that day, I don't know what to tell you. You have to figure out what's important to you if you happen to be traveling. Now, what I explained to my students today is to do a dry run and look at the time of the eclipse that it is scheduled to happen. Make sure you have a clear vantage point of where it is going to occur. Then I want you to take out your cell phone and film it. I will tell you what to do with the energy of that solar eclipse at a later date. That's a whole other conversation. For now, I want you to film the eclipse, but make sure you are looking at it not through the lens of your camera, but through the, your optical cortex. I'm going to give you another exercise as well. I want you to, for all of you who have holy oil, I want you to put the holy oil on your first eye. Yes? And then I want you to command your first eye to open and look at the solar eclipse through your first eye, or as the neophyte would say, your third eye, your physical eyes. And have the camera on, just have it filmed and film the entire event. Now, another thing that I would want for you to do as you are looking at the eclipse, make sure you're wearing your cosmic beacon. And for the entire 24 hour period, which would be on Monday, as it is scheduled, I want you to focus on one thing. You know what that one thing is? Your divine parent. I want you to focus only on your divine parent. And that is all, that's all you need to do. That's gonna be the ritual. For my students who came to Central Park today, you also got a special, a special ritual that I would like for you to execute, and that will be phenomenal. 
For the people who have Galactagons all around the planet, I want to thank you for basically lending your energy to raising the vibration of Mother Earth. It's very, very important. Now, let's talk about the significance of this solar eclipse. Most of you will not be alive when the next solar eclipse happens in about 90 to 100 some odd years. It's just not possible with the possible, the, the configuration of your body right now, which is at stock. Most people will live the rest of their lives in a stock configuration, which means that the way the demigods configured your body to be by cutting off the energy of your telomeres so that you don't live past a certain age. Then you also have the bombardment of chemtrails, diet, GMOs, BPH, and all kinds of other assaults on the physicality of your body, right? These are things that you have to contend with. So your body is not designed to live past a certain age like in the days of Melchizedek, Methuselah, or even Noah, and, or even Gilgamesh, to name a few people. The human body is built with purposeful limitations. So it's important that you begin to strengthen yourself. I just thought of one more thing. This is important. For everyone who has their kundalini activated, I want you to make sure that on the day of the eclipse, which is scheduled to be on Monday, that you give yourself a 10-minute kundalini treatment, which means that you will put your hands together like this and you will activate your kundalini and make sure that you run it in your system for 10 minutes. This will not be the crystalline reiki. But by doing this for 10 minutes, you will be accessing the Dragon Reiki and the Primordial Reiki and the other six in your system. It will be very, very important for you to have your Kundalini activated before the eclipse. For all of you who are worried about the coming of the three days of darkness, the only thing that I can say about that is that it's very important for humanity, like I said before, to come together and ask for that not to occur. I've explained that in detail in the Three Days of Darkness video, so you can refer to that. Also, I would like to say that when a solar eclipse occurs, it is like any other event in the cosmos. There are equinoxes. There are also solstice there's summer autumn winter and fall there are also cosmological events that occur as well and one of them is the solar eclipse when the solar eclipse happens there are new gods that are being initiated into godhood for the very first time that's right within this galaxy when the solar eclipse happens. It is a signature for hierarchies to hand down the energy of God status to a lot of beings. If you don't believe me, you can ask Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin was one of those beings that went from being a human to an ascended master to a bodhisattva to a god. And now she controls the seventh ray of creation. You know, I'm going to tell you that our creator is very, very, very generous when it comes to giving energy to his children that seek it. And when someone desires to grow out of their human form, all they have to do is follow the trail that leads to that path, that leads to that freedom and to that liberation. Most people don't know that it exists. Therefore, they stay locked into recycling. And recycling is fine if that's something that you wish to do. But if you look at how the repetitive nature of recycling has ensconced the human populace of the planet, it's actually keeping a very low frequency to the collective energy of its overall presentation. Which means that when spaceships come here and they touch down, they don't like to stay here very long. 
because the vibration is very, very low. Instantly they know that there are still wars here. There's still the energy of the caste system. There's a lot of different things like basketball wives and lots of other things that don't give humanity a good account of who they are here on this planet. So when we enact these rituals, especially on a day like the solar eclipse, it's important that we give a very clear indicator as to who we are that humanity of earthlings on the planet wishes to grow. And I would ask you all to hold the divine thought of who your divine parents are in your consciousness fully on the day of the eclipse, especially when it occurs. When you are filming the eclipse, I want you to think about your divinity, think about your divine parent, and that's the only thought that you need to hold. It will be something that your divine parents will be very aware of, and they will see you as someone who is seeking to grow. They will help you because of that. If you're just hanging out watching power or empire or something that's mindless during the energy of the eclipse, it's going to give a very low score. There is also a census that occurs during these solar eclipses. What does that mean? It means that when Earth is evaluated, it happens during a time of crisis. It happens during a time of an extinction level event or right before. It happens during a time where Earth goes into a wobble or a equinox. The citizens of Earth are evaluated and they're evaluated by the sum total of their thoughts. What are most people thinking about? So I would ask all of you to make sure that you are holding your thoughts in a very high vibratory rate and that you are thinking about something that is a good account of who you are. And the highest integer of what you can do or you can think of at the time is your divine parents or the creator. But the creator, again, is not something that most neophytes can really understand. Because you guys have been calling the creator God. And God is simply a title. But it doesn't address the grand totality of the prime creator. Not even source. Because source would be considered the one who created the human genome. That also was not the creator. But that's another conversation in it. So, during the day of the eclipse, which is coming up soon, I want you to make sure that a lot of you will be at work. If you can get the time to go and look at it, if you need to get off early, make sure that you give yourself the permission and the luxury of bearing witness to something that will only take place once in most lifetimes. It's a beautiful thing, all right? So I'm going to scroll back a little bit and I'm going to answer a couple of questions, and I hope they're good. Let's see. We have, wow, this is a really long cache of questions. So let's see. What do we have here? There's so many of you. This is a beautiful thing. I'm scrolling back to the beginning. Okay. And I really do receive all of the well wishes. And Bonita Brown, how are you? I hope that your attunements went well. And I'll be waiting to hear about your highlights, hopefully. All right. I see you, Portia and Michael. Greetings. How are you? Would you be so kind as to post the upcoming events on the chat? Um... If you go to Galacticus.com, those events are there. Jennifer Kierman and Nathaniel Brown, two of my beloved students. I'm really happy that you guys came all the way from Divine Culture, which is D.C., today to join us. I was really happy to see you wearing your white. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's see who else. I don't see any questions, so I'm going to continue to scroll. 
my nephew Larry. How are you, nephew? I love you too. It's good to see you. Zandra Sotaborja from Mexico. How are you doing, beloved? I see you, Nin Asiya Rael. Greetings, Novia. Good to see you from Toronto. How's that coming out, Novia? The venue for us being in Toronto because a lot of people have been asking about that. So I want you to continue to work on that or interact with that imperative. Okay. Greetings from Bermuda. Yes, I see you. I'm going to scroll a little faster down. Indeed. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So I don't see any of these, but if some come up, I will be happy to address them the next time. I also wanted to say that during the birth of this phase, especially during the solar eclipse, new gods are created on a systemic basis. And this is going to sound bizarre, but I'm going to share it with you. And I think that after the last audience of the Atlantic or the Atlantis Atlantis seminar, I looked out at the audience and I asked a lot of questions. And the audience, there weren't a lot of people who were adversarial in terms of what I had to say about religion. My job is really not to debunk religion as much as it is to inspire people to think freely when it comes to some of the things that happen during religion, but I don't want to go into that. But what I will say is that when new gods are created. The new gods are created from many different places throughout the cosmos. There are people who have interfaced with the energy of a lot of these cosmological climactic changes and harnessed it enough to become eligible to become a god themselves. If you look at the show American Gods, you can see that there is a technology god. There are many kinds of new gods that are created. There also was an episode. I, I'm, I'm not sure which one it was. But there were different kinds of Jesuses. Jesus has become somewhat of a god. Because so many people have prayed to the formation of thought. Thought to be Jesus. That it is actually created an intelligence by artificial means. And what do I mean by artificial means? Is that if you're giving your prayer in your worship to something that never existed, it will create something that is real. So there are lots of children, millions and millions of children who pray to Santa Claus every year, all throughout the year, not just on Christmas, but especially six months before Christmas occurs, there are lots of children all around the world who are taught that Santa Claus is real. And because they're giving their heart chakra energy to the formation of thought that is known to be Saint Nick, that goes into a bank that creates an intelligence known as a god. So Santa Claus is a real entity. He's not a physical apparatus but he is an entity that has consciousness and he has the consciousness of the people who had prayed their way to have it created in the first place isn't that interesting so when you go back and you look at a show like american gods they said something that was very interesting and it was really bold and i wonder how the people how the writers knew that they needed to put that out there they said that there's a mexican jesus there's this Jesus, that Jesus, a black Jesus, a white Jesus, and those things are true. There are many different kinds of Jesus that have been created by the thoughts, hopes, dreams, prayers, worships, supplication of the devotee. Over time, which would be about 2,000 years, it has created a real dynamic in the universe that this thought form can actually answer you and come to you and visit you and maybe grant a wish for you. But here's the problem. When an artificial formation of thought comes to you, 
it's not plugged into the apparatus of the eternal. It is not plugged into the infinite power and tapestry of creation. It derives its power from the synthesis of collective thought. And collective thought through that symbiosis is very limited because the limitation of the beings that created that in the first place, their operational original point is black. What does that mean? It means that when you close your eyes, I want everyone to close their eyes right now. Okay, close your eyes. What do you see? You see black. You see nothing. You see darkness. That means that your origin of perception begins there. When you look at higher beings, when they close their eyes, they don't see that. They see something very different. And they are plugged into the eternal or the celestis. Now, when your consciousness predates the beginning, it means that you are plugged into infinity or forever. But when you don't go back that far, it means that you have an origin. And that origin does not allow you to connect with the power of creation. And it gives you a very limited bank or threshold of what is real and what can be used to create something out of nothing. There is a saying that's called there's nothing new under the sun. So every thought that you have ever thought of, everything that you think is an original creation has been thought of many times before. It's really about who executes it first that will get the credit, right? So when Steve Jobs pulled the template of the personal computer from the fifth dimension where it has existed for thousands of years, he wasn't the first one to think about that. However, he was one of the very first people to act upon it. Therefore, it made him the father in this world, on this timeline, and in this third dimensional reality as to the one who ushered it in. Doesn't that make sense? However, if you read the lost book of Enki, it talks about how Enki inscribed or he asked someone to sit down and use a lapis lazuli stylist and basically compute some dictation from him. That was an ancient form of a computer. And that was something that was scheduled to happen about 6,000 years ago. It's very, very fascinating, isn't it? So there is also, if you look at technology, there was a microchip that was found inside of a boulder and this boulder was carbon dated and they said that it was over a million years old which means that technology by itself is something that far predates the biblical account of Adam and Eve and that means that the time allotment is very wrong there is something that I taught about during the very first workshops that I gave about four going on five years ago it was called May Miracles and I taught about a spaceship that was found on the opposite side of the moon, the dark side of the moon. And there was a cosmonaut and there was also an American astronaut aboard in 1976. I hope the government doesn't get mad at me for disclosing this, but it's not like it's not common knowledge or it should be common knowledge. And I'm going to share it with you tonight. So when I spoke about this, this ship was over 1.5 billion years old. Now that disrupts everything about religion, doesn't it? There was a ship with two black women on there and they were beautiful. One was decapitated for some bizarre reason and one was in a state of synthesis. By the way, she's still alive. I'm not going to tell you where she's at. 
but she was in something called stasis, which means she wasn't dead or she wasn't alive. But there's a lot of giants in the mountains right now that are hidden that are also in stasis. Something to think about. So time is not really what people think it is. And these ships are all over the place. Some of them are in the bottom of the sea, our ocean's floor. Some of them are inside of the mountains. We just happened to catch one that happened to be on the dark side of the moon. And it got leaked. And there we have some proof of that. But anyway, I don't want to ramble on too much. I just wanted to share some things about the solar eclipse. And I hope that you all will follow the ritual. And you will pray for the planet. And I'm, again, I'm very, very happy to have seen my students today in Central Park. We had a great time, great discussion. And... I think that's about it until the next transmission. I am Sri Master Gano Quills for Galacticus.com and I will see you all very, very soon. Namaste.